Good evening guys, this is M. Shanae for High Fire in the Low Light, and I'm excited for tonight's episode. I have a topic that I've been wanting to cover for a while, and that is a comparison between the two current generation LCD2 models from Odyssey to my own pre-phaser 2012 Odyssey LCD2. To start, I want to thank my contact at Odyssey for allowing me the chance to hear both of the newer models and do a comparison to my older one. So let's get right down to the brass tacks. I have a bamboo LCD2 from 2012 that does not have the phaser. The newer LCD2s had the phaser added to help improve the clarity. The problem, however, with, well, some of the older models of the LCD2 is a great variation. Some of them sound very good, some of them do not. Adding the phaser added clarity, but also helped to unify the sound of the headphone as a whole, so there was less and less variation. And this is of course the headphone that we have come to in this day and age. This is the newest model of the Odyssey LCD2 with the phaser. They have upgraded the headband, so it supports your weight better. They've switched to a single leather pad. Additionally, they have switched to bamboo wood cups. There's no longer a different variety of woods that you can get, it's just the single wood. Now again, this does feature the phaser. Something that Odyssey found though is that people kind of missed that old school Odyssey sound, the pre-phaser sound. So we also have the LCD2 Classic to take a look at. This is the Odyssey LCD2C, C for classic. This does not feature the phaser and no longer has the wood cups, but rather metal cups. Now, of course, let's take a look at my 2012 pre-phaser. So some things to note, the headband on this model is different and it does have those black plastic mounts for the obviously where the cable goes and this is because the original wood connectors did indeed deteriorate another big difference between this 2012 prephaser and the newer models is the pads the pads as you'll notice have a much more aggressive angle to them and to my hands feel like a more genuine leather so the newer cans are both lighter a bit more comfy and this is important they're also easier to drive but ease of ownership aside, how does the sound compare? Well, let's start with the 2F. Now the 2F has a linear low end, good texture. It is slightly dry in the mid range. It does have a bit of forwardness and very good resolve. It is also quite natural on the top end. It's not as dark as you might've heard, and it is definitely not bright. Overall, there is a touch of body in there. There is a slightly withdrawn mid-range, but again, it is an overall, it is a drier, somewhat darker sound. There's good expansiveness, a lot of airiness, and it is certainly an enjoyable sound signature. Now this is, again, this is the Odyssey sound that people knew of the two for many years. More recently, they did relaunch or re-release the LCD2 without the phaser. So let's take a look at how the 2 Phaser Lister 2 Classic compares. So now the 2 Classic is distinguished from the F in that it is slightly wetter sounding. It is slightly less energetic up top, so it is more dark than it is natural, but it also has more heft in the low end. So this is what people associated with the classic LCD sound was a very solid, very powerful low end bass and a very dark top end. This is also slightly more intimate and slightly less open than the 2F. So the clarity that the phaser adds is not present in this. It is not muffled or distorted, but it is again, a little bit less open, a little bit less expansive and somewhat intimate. But another positive for the 2C is the timber is a little bit wetter and a bit more natural. But of course, the big question is, how do the two new models compare to the older LCD2 pre-phaser that I have? Well, unfortunately, in my experience, after having spent a month with all three of these headphones, the older 2012 pre-phaser combines the best of both. The old school pre-phaser has the full-bodied wet 
somewhat beautiful natural timber of the 2C. It has the ex slightly more expansive, slightly clearer, slightly airier presentation of the 2F. It is also a bit more resolved than both of them and has slightly more power than both of them. But it is also a little bit slower. It is just a wee bit more romantic than either one. Some have described these prephasers as sounding like buckets of honey, and this is very much the case. Now, this is odd, though, because it's also a bit more energetic on the top end than either one. So for me, bass guitars, guitars, vocals, instruments like these sound better on the 2C. Strings, violins, percussion, a lot of woodwind instruments sound a little bit better on the 2F. With the 2012 Prephaser, everything sounds very wonderful. There's a beautiful natural timbre with amazing clarity. Buckets of Honey does not mean that it's muffled and this overly smoothed over sound. No, rather there is good resolve. There is phenomenal texture with a noticeable wetness or kind of romantic, very well warm, kind of embracing just quality to the sound. So you guys may be wondering, is it worth it to buy the new ones or should you hunt for an older one? Well, I'm going to be frank. I purchased my LCD2 2012 prephaser from a friend. He had it up until he purchased the LCD4 because he felt that was the only upgrade. So in my case, I knew somebody trusted his impressions and purchased his two only when he got the four. Many of you may not have a chance to buy an LCD2 prephaser from somebody that you know and trust. It's also more easy to drive the newer ones. The 2012 prephaser is a little bit more difficult to drive and when you underdrive it, it underperforms. So again, the newer models are gonna be my recommendation just because you have a choice between a slightly more expansive, slightly energetic, but still dark sound, or a slightly wetter, more powerful, full-bodied sound. Either way, it's easy to drive, and you're gonna have an overall better experience because it's not as heavy or cumbersome to own. Now again, both of these, in my opinion, are a nice step up from something like the HD660S, the DT880, 990, or something like the AKG K702 or any of the hi fi 4 or 5 series headphones. So, the last question though is how do these three compare to the MX4? Well, as you can guess, the MX4 is a clear tier above all of them. The MX4 differentiates itself in two ways. Number one, the driver is different. Please check with Odyssey for the specifics. Number two, it is also lighter and it is the easiest to drive. So what I like about Odyssey is they have definitely allowed for or created a very clear upgrade path as the MX4 is again better than the best LCD2 that you can get your hands on. Again, the sound on the MX4 is more nuanced, more detailed, more resolved, more expansive, just more of everything. But before I let you guys go, I do want to talk about one last thing very briefly. Guys, we're going to talk briefly about cables. Cables matter, and the LCD2 is the start of a headphone and a price point where cables make a difference. I noticed that in every case, with the stock cable, the sound was slightly stuffier. When I switched over to a four braid copper cable, I got a bit more clarity and a bit more naturalness. Now, Audio MV sells a nice copper cable for a reasonable price. You're welcome to buy from whoever you'd like. I just happened to hear them most recently and find myself impressed with them. The benefit of upgrading your cable is you can take this improved cable to better headphones. Yes, you can take it from the LCD2, take it onto an LCD3, take it to an MX4, use it with any of the ZMF headphones, having a nice, quality cable, one that is built very well and offers a more natural sound is something you can take with you as you upgrade your headphones. Something else I'd like to add about the cable upgrades is the option to go balanced. There is no clear benefit to balanced or single end. Now in my case, I have two amplifiers that I used when listening. I used a solid state, fully balanced, portable, as well as a single-ended hybrid tube. 
So when you switch to another cable, you're able to now take advantage of other connectors. Portable situations on the go, I like balanced power. At home, I prefer a hybrid tube. Now, the newer models, again, are easier to drive and you may not need the extra power from going fully balanced. But with the older one, I definitely highly recommend you use a balanced portable if you're going to drive it on the go. So again, with the newer models, they're easier to drive, they require less power and they perform better with low power amplifiers. When you're gonna hunt for a classic pre-phaser LCD2, it is harder to drive. And if you're gonna use it portable, again, I do recommend that you go fully balanced with it. Or you can also get a single-ended amplifier that has a similar high power, low noise, or low distortion output that you find common to a lot of balanced both digital audio players and amplifiers. Another important question though is how does the LCD2 with an upgraded cable compared to the MX4 with the stock cable? Well, as you guess it, the transducer matters most and the MX4, even with the stock cable, is better than my prephaser LCD2 with an upgraded cable. So, if you're gonna purchase the LCD2, definitely invest in a good cable because all of the benefits will carry forward onto the next headphone that you have. So guys, this wraps up my comparison of the two LCD2 current generations, the 2F and 2C, to my own 2012 pre-phaser. I hope that this review answered some of your questions, and if you have additional questions, please leave your questions and comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and have a good night, guys.